Is Penelope Rio the bourbon of the year? Let's find out. What is going on everybody? Nathan here with The Everyday Drinker bringing you guys a brand new video. Today on the bar top we have one of the bottles that I was super, super ecstatic for for the year of 2023 and this right here is the Penelope Rio. And Man, oh man, I am just so excited for it. I can't thank my buddy Kevin from Drink With Friends podcast enough. He hooked me up. He let me know that this was available, and I snagged it up for MSRP right at that $85, $90 mark. This bottle right now is pushing that $300, sometimes $400 on secondary, and I was scared that I was not going to be able to get my hands on this bottle of the Penelope Rio. As you can see, I had a little sip out of this and um, I won't spoil anything for you. So without further ado, let's get into the review. All right, so the Penelope Rio is a blend of three mash bills persisting of 74% corn, 14% wheat, 9% rye, and 3% malted barley. So this is a four grain bourbon. They were then finished in honey barrels and then put into the Amberana barrels from Brazil. The finishing period was a total of two years. This is a four to six year old bourbon bottled at 98 proof and non-chill filter. This is going to go down the exact same grading scale that every single bottle that we've reviewed for the year has gone down. A zero to 10 for the nose, a zero to 10 for the palate, a zero to 10 for the finish, zero to five for value and zero to five for obtainability. Now, before we get into the bottle, make sure you guys are dropping that subscribe because we are pushing 3,500 subscribers 1,500 subscribers off of the 5,000 subscriber giveaway, which one of you lucky winners will be able to get your hands on this bottle of Blanton's right here. So make sure you drop that subscribe. Also, we do giveaways, sample giveaways over at the Patreon. So check the link down below if you want to for as cheap as $2 a month, you can be part of the Everyday Drinker community. So without further ado, let's get into this glass. I'm super excited. I know a lot of you are super excited for this. If you are excited for the Penelope Rio, drop a like down below. And hey, let me know if you yourself have picked up a bottle of this. Without further ado, let's get into the nose. When I first smelled this, the initial nose that I got out of this was a snickerdoodle cookie, a cinnamon roll. It is just a dark, rich, beautiful, just like sweet cinnamon, but it's a glaze. It just smells so sweet. It smells like it's something that's coming right out of the oven, nice and hot. And it also like honey buns, like, the, the finishes of this bourbon are most likely the most prevalent thing that are going to be coming out of this glass. You're gonna get that honey. You're gonna get that spicy cinnamon, whatnot from that Amberana cask. And they just marry so beautifully in this nose. And it, it has honey, it has a honey bun in the left hand and a snickerdoodle cookie in your right. And it's like you make a, a snickerdoodle honey bun sandwich and it's just absolutely fantastic on the nose. It really might be one of the best noses that I've ever smelled in my bourbon journey because there's nothing off-putting on this whatsoever. It also has a hint, a hint of orange marmalade on there, like that the thicker orange, uh, the, the thicker orange jam. And then it also has a little apricot. Like it, it's super, super fruity, super sweet, super cinnamon spice. This is hands down a 10 out of 10 nose. The nose is a 10 out of 10. Again, I cannot thank Kevin from Drink With Friends podcast enough for giving me the tip on this bottle. And uh, here's cheers to you. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Everything goes so beautifully from the nose and transfers into the palate. The one thing that like, I get that snickerdoodle, but the one thing that I really get that's like mind blowing is like what I'm getting in my head is you know those hams that you get at Thanksgiving and it has that like s brown sugar glaze that you drench the ham in and throw it back into the oven and get that nice caramelized sugar on the outside? That is that main flavor profile that I'm getting out of that. And I know that, that that sugar, the brown sugar is definitely spiced with cinnamon and clove, nutmeg and stuff like that. And that is, hands down the most initial prevalent flavor on that initial palette. And it is still going on in the finish as well. I'm gonna let you know that as well. At 97 proof, 
This, it, it's not hot whatsoever, but it is probably the thickest 97 proof bourbon that you could probably get. It's probably the closest thing to a cordial that a bourbon can be. I feel like I get this like sugary film over my lips and it just, you just want to keep going back and licking your lips for it because it's just, it's just so overwhelmingly sweet. And I know a lot of people are torn from those overly sweet bourbons and that's totally okay. A lot of people really do enjoy the sweet bourbons. A lot of people like those oaky bourbons. A lot of people like that well balanced. If you have a line of sweet, balanced oak, this one is definitely on this side. It is on the sweeter side of the bourbons. It really might be the sweetest one that I have personally had, but it's not like, oh my God, this is too sweet. Like you, this is a bourbon that you're going to sip, you are going to enjoy. It is a dessert bourbon for sure. Third sip there, get a lot of honey. Getting a lot of honey, getting that honey bun note. I get like flaky pastry in there as well. This, the, the palette, you know, I'm going, I'm not gonna give it a 10 out of 10 because the, the finishes take over a lot from the initial bourbon flavor that this bottle does have in there. So for the palette, I'm gonna give it a nine. And I know I already spoke highly of the finish while going through the palette and saying how it was lingering for so, so long because it's still going right now after writing everything down, talking for however long I have. But that finish, it mellows out. You get a kick of a cinnamon. Everything else kind of like fades away, right? You're just getting a little bit of that cinnamon spice on the sides of your tongue. The tip of your tongue has a little bit of a sweetness on there, but then it just fades off super, super pleasantly. No bitterness, no nothing like that whatsoever. And it just lingers there on the sides of your tongue with that spicy cinnamon that I am absolutely loving. So again, I'm going to give the finish a nine. So there are rumors about this bottle that there were only 3000 bottles made. I personally don't know about that. I just know that there is that rumor floating that there was only 3000 of these produced and sent out for consumers. And being such a small batch kind of a situation, you know, I mean, this is batch number 23-901. I know on their website, it says batch one. And this bottle right here was in the making for two years. You know, I mean, it, it more, longer than two years. I mean, this was the finishing process of this bottle alone was two years. You know, it had to come into fruition. They had to get the barrels. They had to bring in everything to be able to make this bottle of beautiful bourbon. You know, for $85 at MSRP, I mean, I know you could probably complain about the proof, but I feel like that's a perfect proof point at 98 proof to be able to enjoy everything that this bottle has without it having to be barrel strength and without it being proofed all the way down to say 90 or 80 proof to produce enough for the masses. And if you can find this bottle, I feel like this is for sure, you know, being a double cask finish, this is a value of five out of five. Now the obtainability part is where this is going to kill the score of this bottle. And I don't want, I don't want that to come into account for how fantastic this bottle is if you can get your hands on this. I mean, I, since I, since I heard about this bottle back in December, January, I wanted to obtain this bottle for my wedding in July. And I'm, I'm happy enough that I have this bottle for myself for my wedding to enjoy with myself and a couple of my buddies who absolutely enjoy bourbon. And you know, throughout the weekend, I was hunting this like absolute crazy man. And I know a lot of you are hunting this as well. And I'm not quite sure how easy it is for everybody to be able to get a bottle of this. You know, 3000 bottles isn't a lot. Is that true? I'm not quite sure. But regardless, obtainability, you know, I mean, if you want, if you're in the, if you're in the drive to find bottles of bourbon that are harder to find, join Facebook groups, join discords, join Patreons. Everybody in those, com in those communities helps each other out like absolute crazy. I mean, me and my, me and Kevin, we, we reached out to each other through Facebook, right? I mean, that's how we met each other. 
I, I mean, if he, I'm looking out for bottles for him, he's looking out for bottles for me. Everybody in the, the bourbon community looks out for each other if they're not just strict flippers, you know? I mean, he probably could have reached out to God knows how many other people, but those people wouldn't be enjoying this bottle. You know, they'd be flipping it for that $300, $400 markup. And this bottle right now, I mean, I've now drank uh, two drinks out of this, and it's now marked down to probably $50 if I wanted to sell it. But I'm going to enjoy this bottle until the very last drop. Sorry I went on a tangent there, but for obtainability, you know, I'm going to have to give it a two out of five because you can find these if you do the hunting, if you take the time to do so, but it's not going to be a bottle that is on the shelf every single day of the year. And you know, we just don't know if a batch two is going to be coming out. The, the Penelope Rio has scored the highest score of the year so far out of 35. I do believe it is the highest score. I do believe that the Bardstown Weeded scored pretty high, but this, the Penelope Rio, because of that obtainability, it definitely dropped that score down quite a bit. And if I could give it a five out of five obtainability, I wish I could, but I just can't. And with that said, it would be a 38, but it's a 35. So that makes this bottle 100% bunker worthy. If you have a bottle of this and you find a second one, make sure you pick that second one up. Is it worth $300 on secondary? I don't know. I don't believe it's anything more than $150. If you, if I wanted to pick up a second bottle of the Penelope Rio, I myself would spend upwards of $150, nothing more. You know, definitely less, but nothing more than $150. That's just my take. Let me know down in the comments if you have a bottle of the Penelope Rio. If you don't, I hope you enjoyed it through my review. And if you're brand new, drop that subscribe. But until next time, this has been Nathan with The Everyday Drinker. Cheers.